The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus asked them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending a messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Let's pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I wonder if you've ever gone to something or met someone or just experienced something that was totally not what you expected. Raise your hand if that's ever happened to you. Something happened and it was not what you thought it was going to be, right? Yeah, we are. uh, my husband and I uh, were trying to pick a movie the other night, and we saw a trailer for one that we talked about seeing called The Lost City, and it had Sandra Bullock in it and Tatum Channing and Brad Pitt. So it was the winner. We had to watch this movie, but I tell you what, we watched it, and spoiler alert, Brad Pitt was only in it for five minutes. (laughs) Only five. I was like, this is not what the previews told us. But I will say this also, It was still a really good movie, actually better than I expected. So uh, we thought that the trailer basically seemed to give away the whole movie. You know, sometimes you watch trailers and you're like, my gosh, I think I've seen the movie already. But this one, nope, we hadn't. It was a total surprise. Um, I've been to conferences or workshops or meetings sometimes where I, (sighs) okay, I got to go to this thing. All right, I'll get up and go. And I grudgingly go. And then, after it's all over, think to myself, yeah, that was pretty good. I have to admit, I got a lot out of that. Or sometimes I go, and I'm really excited to go to this workshop or meeting or a play or a concert, and I walk away thinking, well, that was a bummer. And even people and relationships often don't match our expectations. Um, You know that one friend that's really, really super annoying that at the worst of times ends up being the best person to be there for you? Or um, in high school, there was this one guy on the track team that all the girls, we all thought he was so cute. So we all got together one day and decided we were going to go and talk to him. And we went to talk to him, and he was such a jerk. It was awful. And really, he was not that cute after that either. (laughs) So we all all have experiences where we think somebody's going to be one way, and, and then they're not. And we all, in truth, have expectations And we tend to look towards the future, right? We tend to have this vision of what's coming next. We have these pictures in our head of what we want things to be like or what we imagine they're going to be like. And sometimes this can cause us a lot of worry. And sometimes it can cause us disappointment. And sometimes it can cause us joy or excitement that it was much better than we thought. The thing is, all of those visions aren't reality. They're all kind of fantasy, right? They're all our expectations, but it doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. Even sometimes people give us a clue, like they tell us how great a movie is, or in this case, Isaiah tells us what's coming. We jump to conclusions and we let our minds make up what we think is going to happen. But Isaiah does set up some great expectations, doesn't he? We've been reading during the Advent candle lighting each week readings from Isaiah. And he sets up some great expectations that this person is coming to bring peace and justice, that it's going to be this 
great king to deliver us, everlasting father, almighty God, prince of peace. But as we discussed a few weeks ago, that king that came was not necessarily what we were expecting or what the people were expecting. Then Matthew wrote last week about John preaching to prepare the way. John says, prepare the way, make straight the paths. And then this week is a striking conflict, right? The same John the Baptist that says, prepare the way, sends messengers to say, uh, so are you really the Messiah? Or is it someone after you? Jesus, Jesus is so different, maybe, that John is even a little bit confused. It's not what he expected, and maybe, is this the right person? Did I get this wrong? And I think sometimes we also feel like John. When things happen not the way we expect, we often question why this is happening. Why me? Why us? God, where are you? Why do bad things happen? Can we really trust you? Now, if we're caught up on our Old Testament scripture and the prophets, we should know that God is always faithful, even in hard times, and that God is trustworthy. The Old Testament is full of stories about the people having hard times or struggling and doubting, and God always comes and is faithful, right? We see it over and over and over. So we should have this clue. And we should also have a clue to expect something wonderful because that's all Isaiah talks about. But sometimes our great expectations can get in the way. This brings to mind for me this Advent season three questions. And the first is, what are we preparing for? John says, prepare the way. Well, what are we preparing for? And if we really think about it, when we ask that question of ourselves in regular life, is what we prepare for, does that change how we prepare? So if we think we know what we're preparing for, do we prepare differently? What do we hope for? Do our details kind of cloud the experience so if we're hoping for something and it's not that? What happens? And finally, Jesus asks, what do you come to see? What did you come to see? They're really tough questions. But today, let's focus on the last one, Jesus' question. What did you come to see? Now, perhaps he's addressing the, the crowd's um, expectations of John, you know, because he's asking about John, what did you go to the desert to see? You went to see John, but what were you expecting? And, and so maybe they thought they were going to see some particular thing, right? But maybe also there's a deeper question underneath this, and that's, why do you come? What did you come to see? Or why did you come? Why are you here? And that's a great question. What did you come to see? Perhaps this is a question we should ask of ourselves all the time, especially when it comes to church. What did you expect to see? What did you come to see at worship? What did you come to see when you were serving? What did you come to see in Bible study or in church in general, what did you come, why did you come here? What did you come here to see? In this case, it's a question more about purpose and trust, isn't it? Maybe what we expect to see isn't always what happens. But maybe if we come with trust and purpose, and we don't have the expectation, we won't be as disappointed or our expectations won't be confused or crushed, but maybe we'll be able to see Christ in all of it. Expectations aren't bad. And surely, Isaiah and the other prophets set the stage for us. They give us all these great expectations, and they're not wrong. And sometimes experiencing the unexpected doesn't have to be disappointing, right? But today, as we prepare the way for Christ Perhaps we should ask ourselves, what am, I, what am I coming to see? What am I preparing for? What am I coming to see? And the thing is, our trust brings us to see God with us, no matter what. Amen. <laughs>